In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to write an exponential growth function or an exponential decay function. And what we're looking at here is the equations that are in the form y equals a times 1 plus r to the t. That's this one here. Or y equals a times the quantity 1 minus r to the t. So what the a represents in both of these equations, it's the initial amount or the starting amount. And then the r represents the rate of growth or the rate of decay as a decimal. So if they say it's like a 70% rate of growth, then you would use this top equation where you'd say r equals 0 0.70. So you want to convert that percent to a decimal. And if it says a 70% rate of decay, you want to use this bottom equation here where it's 1 minus 0 0.70. And then t represents the time. It's usually in years, but it could be in months or days. It depends on how the problem is set up. I'll show you some examples. And then y is the ending amount, so what you end up with after t years or t months or t days, depending on the problem. So this whole uh, base here, this 1 plus r, that represents the uh, growth factor. And this 1 minus r here represents the decay factor. So that base is going to tell you if it's bigger than 1, that's going to be growth. And if it's between 0 and 1, it's going to be a decay. And then you just have to ask yourself sometimes, you know, how much more than 1 is it? That's going to, the amount more than 1 is going to be your uh, uh, rate of growth. And the less than 1, that's going to be the amount uh, that's going to be, uh, how much less than 1 it is, it's going to be how much it's going to be decaying by. So we'll look at some examples. So the first example what we're looking at here is, say you invest $2,000 at 4% annual interest, and it's compounded annually, so just once per year. How much will you have after three years? So because this is a, a growth problem, we're going to use that top equation, y equals a times 1 plus r to the t. Our starting amount, a, is 2,000, and our rate of growth is 4%. Now remember, 4%, to convert that to a decimal, you move the decimal two places to the left, so that's going to end up being 0 0.04. And the time, that's in this case three years. So if we simplify a little bit, we get y equals 2,000, 1.04 to the third. Notice this base here is uh, greater than 1, which means that this is going to be an exponential growth function. It's going to grow. It's going to go get larger and larger as time continues on. And now what we're going to do is going to put that into the calculator and see what our ending amount is. So do that real quick here. So I'm getting it's $2,249.73. Be careful here, you want to always round to the uh, two decimal places to the pennies. So originally I got 0.728 and that 8, I rounded that 2 up to a 3. So that's going to be your ending amount after three years. Okay, now for example two, let's try this one. So it says there are 40 pond lilies growing in a pond at the rate of 25% per month. And how many pond lilies will there be after six months? So again, we, this is an exponential growth function because it's obviously growing. The pond lilies are growing at a rate of 25% per month. So we're going to use that first equation, y equals a times 1 plus r to the t. Our starting amount is the 40 pond lilies. And 25%, we're going to move that decimal two places to the left. So that comes out to 0.25. And we want to find out how many pond lilies there will be after six months. We're going to use six. Now, in this problem, everything was done in months. Like the rate of growth was 25% per month. The time was months. So if we simplify this a little bit further, we get 40. Our base is 1.25. That represents the growth factor, like what you're multiplying by each month. And you're doing that six times. And we're going to see how many total pond lilies there are after six months. So let's see what we get here. Go ahead and check my work. So I'm getting 152.59, but we're rounding to the nearest pond lily. So since this is 0.5, I'm going to round that up to 153, approximately 153 pond lilies. And you got it. Okay, last problem here. See if you can do this one on your own. We'll go through it together. But there are a 1,000 trees in a local park and they're dying at the rate of 5% per year. Okay, assuming no new trees are added to the park, how many trees will there be uh, in 10 years? Okay, so this one we're looking at an exponential decay function. So it's going to look like this form here where it's 1 minus r. And you can see that our initial amount is 1,000 trees. So that's our a value. And it's going down by 
5% per year. Now remember, with 5%, we're going to move that decimal point 1, 2 to the left. So that's going to be, put our placeholder in there, 0 0.05. And we want to know how many trees are after 10 years, so time is uh, 10. So if we simplify this a little bit here, we get 0.95. And notice that 0.95 is less than 1, which means that this is going to be like an exponential decay uh, function, so it's going to be decreasing as time goes on. And if we simplify this a little bit further, let's do this on the calculator, see what we get. Check my work. I'm getting uh, 598.7, but of course we're dealing with whole trees here, not parts of trees. So because 0.7 is uh, 5 or higher, we're going to round up. So it's going to be approximately 599 trees that are left uh, in this park here. So great job. If you want to see some more examples where I talk about exponential growth and exponential decay functions, go ahead and click the video I put on the screen there for you, and I'll see you over in that video.